Welcome to my snowy hotel room in New Jersey. Uh, last night I was working on time coding ProPresenter from Ableton. Posted a photo on Instagram and got a bunch of messages asking how I do it, can I make a video? So yes, I'm going to make a video real fast in my hotel room before I pack all this up and we head to rehearsals. Okay, so first off, um, time code. There's a ton of views about time code. I'm not gonna like fully dive into time code and all that stuff, but I use MT time code um, and I plop it into our Ableton session, which you can see here. Um, so as you can see, we have it broken out by song. So this is all eyes on you. And down here at the bottom, I have a SMT, uh file. I store all my SMT files here and then I can drag them into the session here. So one of the things that we do is every song is a different section of 10 minutes. So it's hour six, zero is the first song. Hour six, 10 minutes is the second song. Hour six, 20 minutes is the third song, so on and so forth. So every song gets its own chunk of 10 minute time code. And this session is actually built out to where it can just flow. Like you don't even have to trigger each song, it could just flow from one song to the next. But the reason why we do that is if we go back into a song or if we cut a song because of time or whatever, we can still fire that song like Oceans and it will trigger the time code that's for that song in ProPresenter. So as you can see here in ProPresenter, um, I have my songs, here's my set list here, here's my timeline up here, and there's nothing in this timeline yet for Broken Vessels. Um, as you can see, time code is engaged at hour six, minute 30, because that's the time code file that I have drugged into my Ableton session here. Um, if I uncheck that, now you can see my uh, controls are active. Okay, so usually I start with a blank slide in the timeline, as you can see for Broken Vessels, there's nothing in here except for that blank slide. I'll fire Broken Vessels here. Instrumental. I'll Three, hit play record four. on my timeline in ProPresenter. And then I can trigger the clips that I need to and they will appear in the timelines. So as you can see, every time I fire one of these, it's adding a cue or a keyframe in my timeline here. So, once they're in here, it's actually really easy to um, zoom in and nudge these around. You can just grab and drag it wherever you want to. Um, and so you can see those are the cues that I just made. Once those cues are made, you can then lock it to time code. Um, and right now you can see that I have it stopped because over here in my time code window, which you get to from view time code, um, it stopped because I'm not playing anything. So now if I actually fire Broken Vessels again, you can see Three, that four. the time code's playing and the playhead on my timeline is also playing. So I'll show you that with a song that's actually already done. So if we do All About Jesus and I fire this, you'll see on my ProPresenter, it changed two, the song in the playlist intro, for me two, and three, fired the first four. clip, which if I go up to All About Jesus, Curse, you can see that it's scrubbing through my timeline. As you can see, it's following that time code that I made the start. The cool thing is, is that ProPresenter is actually pretty smart with how you lay out these clips in your time code. So if I trigger the first chorus here um, from All About Jesus, if I trigger that, it's gonna jump this playhead to that chorus. Two, three, four. So as you can see, it was in the second chorus, I fired the first chorus and it went back for me. So 
even though I'm clicking these manually, I'm not even recording time code. Like usually with MA, you're like firing time code and hitting record and it's putting the keyframes in there. Even though the time code's unchecked and I'm just playing it back and then I nudge them all around, it's keeping track of the time code for me, which is really, really cool. So I can go to the bridge. bridge two, three, four. And I didn't like the timing of that, so I can actually just nudge this slightly that way. We can try it again, hit the bridge. bridge two, three, four. That was better. I like the slides to be a little ahead so people have time to read it before they start singing. So that's better timing. So I just nudged it, hit play again, and boom, it was on track. Okay, so typically we use an iPlay Audio 12 or iConnect Audio Play Audio 12, something like that. That interface and a whole tracks rig that the tracks laptop sits on and it has all the outputs, XLR, blah, blah, blah. But in the hotel room, I'll show you what I'm doing to be able to edit this. So here's my two laptops. Here's our tracks laptop and our purpose laptop. Um, so all I'm doing is using the built-in speakers to hear the tracks. And then I'm using the headphone out uh, eighth inch to XLR into my Focusrite, which goes USB into m this laptop here that I can select my input pro presenter as that interface. Um, and that's pretty much it. The only thing that I had to do to be able to do that, if you've never done this, is in your audio MIDI settings here, you have to create an aggregate device. Um, so that way you can use your headphones and your speakers at the same time. And then in your Ableton preferences, you can select that aggregate device, which gives you four out, four channels technically, left, right, left, right, left, right, out of the headphone jack. And then you can just change your routing here um, in Ableton to accommodate what you want. So as you can see, my time code is going out one and two, which is the headphone jack into uh, the interface. And then everything else is three and four, which are the speakers. So you can see here, this is the OCD Labs case with that MacBook Pro that I was working on. And we have the iPlay Audio 12 in here. And then on the back, we have the plate with all of the cables, it's all labeled and power, and then the two cables that go out to the laptop, and that's, that's it. It's pretty clean and slick.